Okay, uh, so let us have this uh, short presentation uh, about uh, what KRCC has done. Uh, most of this work in includes the work that has been done since 2009. So the journey of the SSG started in 2009 on a mountain at the summit of the mountain called the Wakobiko. So that is when the whole thing started and K LMCF came to bring more meaning to this. So we are KFCC, uh, we work with churches and, and church organizations as well as community at large to make a huge difference in the areas uh, where we work. So uh, I will just speak to the, to the slides. So by the way, I'm telling you by lunchtime you'll still be here. I'll hold my horses. So you can see here that um, we are Guazulu Regional Christian Council operating in Guazulu Natal uh, under the district called King Zajuayo District, formerly known as Utungudu District. So now it has been renamed King Zajuayo District. This is the second richest district in the province, for your information, after, after Deben, after Metro. So you see, this, this is where there are mines, there are industries. And, and so on. So the economic hub of the province are in this area. So like O Richards Bay, uh, OBHP Billiton, that is where they are. There is a harbor, there is an airport as well uh, that, that side. But it's one of the underrated uh, districts in the province. So we are under Umlalazi local municipality. Umlalazi is one of the five local municipalities under King Zedwayo, which includes Umfolozi, Inkanda, Mlalazi, Mtojaneni, and Mtatuze. So, and the total population of this district is close to 2 million, which is the fifth of the province. The province in Wazul Natalia are about 10 million. So, and the areas where we operate now, coming down to the local area, is Eshowe. These are villages in Kanini, uh, they call it in Kaneng in, 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 in Sutu. <laughs> so, so, it's Wakosa. Wakosa, there is a popular, this name, this village was made popular about six years ago when somebody stood up and declared himself that I'm Jesus Christ. So the, in my paper on TV there was a uh, Ujesu show. You might have heard or read about that. So, and this is where uh, our colleagues have been working under Ujesu show. And there's another place called Emakune. Emakune is um, uh, the place uh, where one of the popular DJs called Linda Spear comes from. So, so it's, it's, it's another village where we are operating. It's under the traditional leadership of Ubaba uh, Ushange. That is why in this room there are already three Shanges that are here. So they are not under one roof, but they are from the same village. So this is a um, short about KRCC. And now, how, how, where do we come from? How did do we come to be there to, to be KRCC? Then it started in the early 90s when there were political killings which left more than um, thousands or thousands of orphans and widows um, uh, without anybody to look after them because the targets were mainly men. If you are IFP, the NC will kill you and vice versa will be true. Those were the two active political parties. Really, it left a number of houses homeless, I mean, without any father, left orphans and so on. So, Therefore, a group of church leaders decided to come together to go and console, to go and huelama, to fugamela, to go to that particular family to say you'll be okay, to start doing care. Care started with the church leaders saying that we are going to take care of those families. So they were meeting in the streets, the corner of the streets, saying which corner we are doing, we are going to meet, we are going to meet in this particular corner, and then we go together. So, and it was mainly pastoral care. Uh, there was little talk about the psychosocial support and all other kinds of interventions. And that is all. And that was the time when we were popular with giving food parcels, asnegama food parcels, all the time. There was nothing encouraging people to do things for themselves. So, so this is KRCC and uh, well, the programs that we are doing, we call them programs, but in actual fact, these are um, 
they are areas of interventions. These are issues raised by beneficiaries, raised by the council members, raised by the members of KRCC. They will meet and say, we have a particular problem. They will come with a problem in front of you saying that the problem is now uh, children do not have a, play, a chance to play, they do not have a place to play, they are hungry, they will tell you that there is no food to eat, and uh, there is gender-based violence and so on. So people are being kicked out um, from their families because of one, two, three and so on. So KRCC will then make these as themes, focus areas. Uh, when we start looking at the at what KFCC is all about. Actually, KFCC is all about reducing the vulnerability of women and children. And these are the areas of vulnerability. HIV and TB program uh, that is going on. Um, 
in other parts of the uh, region where we are working. So, uh, where we are working in all these areas, we, we want to have the community where women and children are no longer vulnerable. So this is what we want to do as an organization. This has never changed. We have changed the language. We have put it in colorful uh, um, uh, language in many different ways. But all what we want to, to see, we want to see happy families. We want to see happy children. We want to see happy women because those are the most vulnerable people. Even when we started in the early 90s, our focus, it was about uh, women who were widows. It was about children who were orphans. So that's how CAPS started. So therefore, we still want to ensure that um, So in terms of our staff, CAPS is a team of 10 staff members with all directly and indirectly involved in the SAG children's work. So the work that we are talking about, Aban Kesemis and Aban Kesemis by 10. And so on gets involved, Gulom Sevens is Kurumanga out today, Gesin Tela is a Shuga Shugan. That is why we, you see seven of 10 people here, and those three who are not there, who are not, who are not here, they are still uh, relevant but at different level. So we said, let us bring uh, seven of us. So therefore, the child still remains the core business of the organization. Uh, these are the number of families that uh, we have reached, uh, working with uh, 350 uh, families in three villages. Uh, so this uh, should have really, when I was looking at the figures, I was thinking of the other areas. KMCC works in a much bigger area, which is the fifth of the province. There is uh, Zululand, Mkanya Buden, and King Zedwai. So, and for this particular program, we have zoomed in into Mlalazi. So, let's see statistics. Let's evaluate a land. Let's assess Mlalazi. Other than that, the corners in the city we have been down. Jenga go nongo, go denge, go vazi. We are litiga. Go back, go back, back. So yes, in the city centre, can of but it's just that we need to start uh, looking at other works that we do that are not of the fund but of the KFC or of KFC, so that we have a much comprehensive reporting. That is Kulumala just before break. Uguti, our sickness is that we underreport. We we don't sell ourselves in the funding. So this is just for one village, um, for one area. It says that you want to show. Ishoa is just one area. We do work in Ghana. We do work in Ghana. We do work in Olundi. We work in um, Bangeni. We are starting a new program in Fulusi. So those things have even been recorded. The more we engage together, that is where other things are emerging. Which, you know, we are reporting something for that particular village. Number of children. So here we are saying number of children reached 4,000. Um, well, <clears throat> This, uh, uh, this is a statistics from 2009, building up to see this year, who did we see, what have we done in those areas. So now we've come to, to 4,000 um, in Kanini only. So number of groups, so far we have 31 groups to date, the self-help groups, and these groups um, are all in these three areas that we are talking about. They have a number of businesses they are doing. I think they have about nine businesses, different types of business, but I did not mention all the businesses that they, they are doing. So they are still active. But what we need to know as our highlights is that to date, KRCC has managed to, the groups have managed to build 89 houses uh, out of two rent. So that's one of the highlights. Um, so the other thing is that um, there are nine businesses that are still active. They include um, businesses like sewing, selling agricultural products, ads, uh, blocks, etc. So those are part of the businesses that are that are happening that are raking in money. So. And uh, one of the highlights that um, we need to know is that um, the life of women has changed 
so well that uh, I remember at some stage even the self-esteem but today they are much more confident they are walking taller than before with the shoulders up high so this is because they can make something so and um, not only that seven nobu september always the local color but even the social economic status um that is it is in a limpi little uban on a car so i remember one of the mamas also kumula mama biela um umala lasbia so she was on tv at some stage and she was saying that uh, because of these groups today we can even eat an egg for breakfast mm. so you see the, comparatively she knows very well Uti, yesterday before I started the groups before I was involved here I was having a particular breakfast but now my breakfast is blessed with an egg so that shows something um, and they can afford to go to certain places they can afford to go and get treatment they can afford to go and access medical um, uh, services so it's because money is there because if you have to collect your tablets uh, from the doctor from the clinic uh, you are not given money to do that but ama groups have made it so easy for you to have imani kona like those ones who go access to those services yes. yes so those are the things that are very much exciting to hear so and uh, having done all these activities and all these businesses, uh, there is a total investment uh, of Kulabotura that are contributed on a weekly basis um, by 31 groups, more than 400 women. So, in the period of nine years, Asenze Imalenga Pezulu are 5 million or 5.2 million. If you can take the books from the first month, that was in August 2009. Adegle Onyanga, Uze, October 2016 and 17, you'll find that 5.2 million in Falagatan. That is done by women uh, doing their work. Yona Gile Mala Seven Chijin Bilong Ayo, Zabu. Yona Gile Mala Bai Senga Inga Nekole. Kune Inga Nekole, Tolama Degree today. They are graduates. Uh, this morning I was talking to one Unom Veliso uh, who is at a tertiary in the School of Agriculture, uh, just saying, I wanted to greet, please do greet Abanye, Ama colleagues, Ami, Naskati, Sinabema, Krupin, because she is aware that we are meeting NMCF. And, she's, uh, and she said to me, Ubachel, I'm still doing well in my studies here. And she's still an SSG member today, even if she is there at a the tertiary. Yesterday, we've been visited by um, the other youth from the Department of Agriculture saying that they want to be part of this NMCF. A, 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 and render a, a particular item, it could be a contribution towards Omama oh, doing they want to contribute their skills free of charge because agricultural products have done so well. They've taken kids to school. They once they they, they, they have Ama vegetable tunnels, they leave something in the school there. They take something home as well. So that's how we count on the number of children that are benefiting. So uh, I'm saying that they we, we, we used to talk of food security. We are so poor, we don't have um, plenty of anything except poverty itself. God, people have food. That was the main thing. First priority of all. That is food security. But now we have graduated from food security to food sovereignty. Lapis na sape uti be ugula, patas pega ugula ogu healthy, ogu ne nutrition, ogu pilising ane ibe inti itatambe, ibe we kaba kaba baba ti ozo lim kaba kaba ikabi living. So that's the kind of the child that you want to to to, to have. So we are so happy about that. Um, ugu ti si agbona wenzaga as a result of this. So having said that, there are challenges. So. Illiterate. So, if you want to school bag is phone, when I saw one of the phone, then 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 I, man, I be go amam. Then my man, I be go name tete. The phone go to see see long. He say, man, the phone go name pagami so eighty. 
si afi so muti squaz wey fundela. Um, Injoba squaz wey fundela. He want to say to us book writers, Sipale, we want to go beyond that. So we have partnered with Save the Children. They are encouraging children to participate in the IDP itself. So, and Labo <coughs> Mama, we want them to get there. So that needs a bit of literacy. So access to basic services like water, electricity. So this is still a challenge. Uh, this year, Nganini experienced a, a protest for the first time. I've been with the uh, uh, KRCC for the past 13 years, but when they are protests, they are always in town, in a township. But for how many days? Uh, so two weeks. Two weeks, we were in a protest where nothing was moving. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. You see, one thing that I'm, I'm getting, which is, that protest has a particular popular name. Uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, 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 the walls of Jericho in that particular context were, were falling apart uh, because it was one of the worst that has ever been seen. It happened in Ghana. And I'm not going to say who to over about the other. Uh, I'm not going to mention people who were there, but it is part of the advocacy that we do together because they knew exactly what is being done. And the CFs were part of it. Uh, so even now we were saying we were saying that we make the illegal untang. So therefore, it was about the services. Children were going to school uh, with no clean water, no enough water, no access to water, and so on. So electricity is still a problem, and so on. And they were very much active in that. Here is another challenge. The challenge is called a coordination of government and NGO services. Uhulu many nama NGOs umseven the swenza ubuyenga zuchu ushugene kukunga slangane kase. So uhulu many will do their thing and NGOs will do their own things. So then we we end up losing some of of the things that are supposed to be known and reported. So rainfall improved. As I see, got a slight drought in the past year. Now there's an improvement, but excuse me, but the capacity to ha to harvest water is limited. It's limited to few tanks that women have built. For for our information, women in the groups are building tanks themselves from the scratch using um, udaga, the mud. Actually, the concrete and with some stuff. They have not only learned to do that, they have also taught other projects how to do that. But still, they are limited, those terms. So the rains are there, but we can't have a solid water that is coming. Um, well, we have spoken about the second last one that is under reporting, uh, is the issue. We want uh, Utulani to go along with us. We go to a project. Uh, she, he video records what is happening and someone is recording the, the, the actual work that is happening there, interviewing the actual people who are making the difference, the children themselves. We hear their voices so that we don't speak on behalf of, of the children, but they speak in their own voices. But that needs this kind of technology. That needs a person who will be documenting that properly. I think that would be a much better story than always speaking on their behalf. So we need to invest more on documentation. So then the other thing, MOUs with key stakeholders. We don't have um, MOUs here. We want to have memorandum of understanding with different stakeholders. I think we do have with uh, like IEC uh, and with the coalitions and so on, but we need the MOUs with the government, especially government departments, so that um, like when we need this training, we draw from the MOU instead of Starting a fresh study pants, see your focus is called, see your We need to start having that discussion uh, based on our MOU. So these are the challenges that we have um, with regard to this work that we are doing. The maintenance relations, relations with other stakeholders. 
So I said there is an attachment. Yes, indeed, there is an attachment which um, shows uh, which show which shows us uh, the the stakeholders that we are working with, and the, those stakeholders. Um, I think we have how many here? We have uh, we have about 12, 12 of them, and um, we we have indicated that with MSF we have this type of relationship and we have been working together for X number of years. With this department, we have this type of relationship, we have been together for this number of years. The oldest is DSD, but in terms of uh, the quality of the relationship, unfortunately I must say is the least. So if you don't know what this now, we've got government departments, because they have a shortage of sort of social workers. Um, the social worker services are a very big area in here, and there is a, the EUNIZOL, maybe in other institutions, they've cut the production of social workers. Uh, I don't know, they say there is um, an excess, but when you go to the community itself, aweko. So that's one challenge that, that we have. So there's little that we benefit uh, in terms of our relationship with uh, DSD. So they co a host of other organizations, AMA health organizations, children organizations, advocacy organizations that we are working with. So unfortunately, the document is not linked to, to, this, to this one. So according to this, I'm left with 30 seconds uh, for the, before the battery dies. So therefore, before death, is realized uh, or before that does that does that apart okay so well in clinics no we are not working uh, directly with them instead we do referrals um, so that those are some of the things that we want uh, to strengthen so uh, basically this is the yard outside KRCC children's plane and this is a photo that was taken um, it was in July when we were with uh, CAC uh, having a discussion with uh, children uh, when children they were given an opportunity to articulate exactly what are their issues what worries them and what will make them happy and this was the Saturday so and whilst playing we were still getting some information talking so that was one of those Saturdays so on that note uh, good people thank you